Hello and welcome to the video. This video is my easy guide to measurements in beer brewing. I shall be covering which measurements are needed, when and with which instruments. The first instrument that I will cover is the hydrometer. This is a total must have and the good old hydrometer is used to measure the gravity or levels of sugar within your wort or beer. Be sure that when you pick up one of these you also pick up a trial jar. This can be seen on the screen right now above the hydrometer itself. An important thing to understand with the hydrometer is that it only will give you an accurate reading when the liquid that's put into the trial jar that it's reading is 20 degrees C. Don't worry if you're a few points either way, this won't have a huge difference. But of course it goes without saying that this cannot be used for measuring your gravity while you're in the boil phase of the brewing. Using a hydrometer is actually pretty simple stuff. Fill the jar close to the top and pop in your hydrometer. Give the hydrometer a quick spin with your fingers and wait until it settles. If your sample has bubbles at the top, then give them time to drop out before seeing the real reading. The other thing to bear in mind when taking your reading is that you're always going to the bottom point, because of course in a jar the liquid will curve. The diagram that's on your screen currently will show you exactly where the reading is taken, and it's taken from the bottom of the curve. Okay, so now let's have a look at when you would actually use your hydrometer. You will actually take your first reading as soon as you have actually cooled down your wort just prior to pitching your yeast. The measurement that you will take now is referred to as the original gravity, or OG for short. Following this initial reading, you will then wait until your fermentation appears to be over. And what we really need to do now is we need to make sure that you've actually reached your final gravity. Now an important thing to mention at this stage is that original gravities and final gravities, like everything in brewing, are actually estimates. Always leave your beer, if it's a standard one at least, for a minimum of 14 days before you even start to think about putting it into bottles. And certainly the time measurement of this is totally irrelevant. It's actually the final gravity of the beer that is the total thing to focus on here. And of course, even if you've reached what is the perceived final gravity, you still need to give this time to make sure that it really is. So what I recommend you do with a standard beer is that after day 12, you take your first final gravity reading. And if you find that three days later, or even two days later, that you're still at the same final gravity figure, then it's now safe to bottle your beer. Do not simply take a gravity reading on day 14 and see that it's close enough to your perceived final gravity and bottle your beer. This is how people create bottle bombs. Next up, we have the refractometer. The refractometer and the hydrometer are actually quite similar types of equipment in their use, in the sense that they will both give you gravity readings, which is basically, as I said before, measuring the level of sugar. One common misconception with the refractometer is that it's not actually temperature sensitive. It actually is, but because you're actually using a very small drop of wort, maybe two or three of them to get a reading, it cools down to 20 degrees C very quickly and thus is perfect for using during the boiling process. The big issue with a refractometer is that as soon as you have alcohol within your sample, you will then get incorrect readings. The way that you will use a refractometer is actually as follows. Lift up the plastic cover and add a few drops of your wort onto its sample plate. 
Replace the cover, ensuring that you have no bubbles trapped. Leave it to settle for about 5 minutes and then hold it up to a light source. You can then look through the actual device and you will see that a blue line marks the gravity level. I show a picture of what that looks like on the screen here and of course the blue will not be throughout the entire image. So as discussed already the refractometer is just used to see where the gravity is within the brew itself. The easiest and most useful time to use it is when you are already close to finalizing your boil. So something like 10 minutes to the end is perfect. This information will allow you to make choices before finalizing your brew. Should you find that you are short on gravity, then you can add extra fermentables like liquid or dry malt extract to build up the gravity to match what is needed for your recipe. To work out how much to add, then the use of brewing software will be needed. Should you find that you are over gravity, then you can simply add more water to thin out your wort, or you can boil for longer. You might also decide to just leave it as it is. Do be warned though, this will affect the balance of the beer. The refractometer becomes your brewing companion in allowing you to make informed choices. Next up we have the pH meter. A word of warning here, there are many different types of pH meters on the market and for brewing I would suggest that you do not buy one that is of a budget nature. In terms of precision of reading I would suggest that you go for something that has at least plus minus 0.01 pH units of accuracy. Go for a quality digital unit and totally forget paper types. This also means that pH meters for swimming pool use are really not of any use to us for brewing. I would also recommend buying one that has a minimum of two point calibration. You will find that with brewing in the end, if you do buy cheap equipment at the very beginning, you'll only end up replacing it later on and thus it becomes a false economy. The pH meter is commonly used in brewing after we add our grains to our mash water as a way of determining our water's pH. The desired level is 5.2. Please see my water video for further information on this. Another use for a pH meter is when you are souring your wort for use for a sour style of beer. This full process is actually explained in another of my videos where I brewed a Berliner Weisser. Please consult that video for more information on souring. This is without doubt an interesting type of brew and even if sour beers aren't really your styles of choice I would still urge you to brew one anyway as a basis for a good experience. The use of a pH meter is also very simple, just read the digital display. No instrument guide on brewing will be complete without the mention of the thermometer. Temperature in brewing is an important measurement that requires accuracy. Again, it is worth investing in a good quality, accurate device. I would suggest investing in a digital thermometer with a separate probe or a brew pot version depending on how you brew. The infrared thermometers are a great technology, but the big drawback to these is that you can only measure surface temperature. Sure, you can give it a good stir, but then that adds further work that can hardly justify the price of these compared to anything else. If your brewing system already has a means of measuring temperature built in, then it is highly recommended that you check to see if that temperature is actually accurate. This is especially true of the budget all-in-one brewing systems. Testing of these has revealed that some of them are as much as 5 degrees Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit inaccurate, even during mashing steps. This will dramatically change the intended result. The same goes for fermenters with stick-on temperature gauges. Check them before you rely on them. The digital thermometer is a very simple item to use, but do keep in mind that temperature while brewing will vary between the bottom, middle and top of the liquid. Giving your wort a stir during the mash or boil will assist in getting you an accurate temperature reading. Times that a temperature reading is important are as follows. 
during mashing and boiling, during the chilling stage to ensure that you do not kill your yeast and that you are fermenting at the right temperatures. Always double check the readings of any other thermometers that you use on equipment to ensure that you are getting actually a true reading. And of course during fermentation. Stability of temperature during fermentation is the single most important factor in the entire process. For further information on fermentation, please check my channel and you will see that I have a fermentation easy guide. So there you have it. This concludes this easy guide video. I hope you have found it both useful and interesting. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I am a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy brewing!